Today, you've decided to take on a tedious project which is beyond your normal scope, replacing your RV's leaking exterior trim. You could have paid the dealer to do it, but unsurprisingly, you also want to have enough money for retirement. Hi, I'm Mark Bear. I'm going to teach you my RV renovation secrets, and in exchange, you can detail scrub my black tank. One thing before we get started on this project, and I cannot overstate this enough, your RV needs to be dry. If it rains, hopefully you have a large enough tarp to cover the trailer. Now let's get moving on to our project. The fact is the whole process of fixing the back two side trims and roof trim took about a day and a half or two days of work. You see we bought this fifth wheel and it had a pretty bad leak inside, so simply adding caulk to the trims wasn't enough. So to get started with gutting our exterior trims, we're going to peel this flexible plasticky strip here that is inside the metal trim and start pulling it out. You'll note that underneath this strip are some screws that hold in the metal trim. The flexible strip is also held on at the bottom and the top by the bottom plastic trim and the top corner trim. A screw gun should be able to pull out the screws holding in these two smaller trim pieces. If you're going to be reusing the trim pieces versus buying new ones, make sure to put them to the side in a safe place. It may be interesting to note the screws you just pulled out. You can see where the leaking has become more volatile on the inside based on the rust that you find on them. Naturally, we're going to discard these. Now, methodically using a utility knife, cut the caulk that holds the outside of those trim pieces. Remember, you aren't trying to cut the trim piece or your back panel wall, but just the caulk that's between them. So be extra, extra patient with this. Screwing up here can seriously add a lot of work to your already busy schedule. You can also use a putty knife to help you pry off these pieces. As you can see with my top corner piece, I found a slew of ants when I removed it. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the little freeloaders. Now, let's take a look at the prettiest part of my fifth wheel. Mmm, mmm, delicious. With the two plastic trim pieces now removed, let's yank out that old nasty flexible strip. You probably can guess the next step. We're going to start unscrewing the old rusty screws from that main metal side trim. Now this may seem like a simple process, and for the most part it is, but we're going to soon take a look at a situation where it's a real pain in the butt to unscrew some of these screws. For example, what would you do if the head of the screw gets stripped out due to its decrepit great-grandfatherly appearance? It could very likely happen to you, and you'll see that shortly in this video, so stay tuned. For now, pull out that utility knife again and let's very carefully cut the caulk out between the trim piece and the back wall of the trailer. Remember, don't cut into the back wall at all. It will leave a gash that is very difficult to fix, so take your time. This isn't a Los Angeles highway, you can't afford to have road rage here. You don't necessarily need to cut really deep into the caulk here either. Although it doesn't hurt if you can, make sure you run your knife down all the sides of the trim for this process, left side and right side. You can use a putty knife or a five-way paint tool, as you see here, to pry off the trim. It's probably best to start at the top and to work your way down. And also, don't ever pry to the point where you could possibly bend the trim. Eventually, it'll be easy enough to take it off with just your hands. As you remove it, You'll also note that if anyone attacks you at this point, you know have a formidable weapon in your hands to retaliate. By the way, before we continue, please take a moment to thumbs up this video and leave a comment. You have no idea how much it helps us grow this channel. So, where were we? Let's move up to the roof trim. After the other corner piece is taken off, we can remove our flexible corner strip. After which we can remove the old, decrepit, grandmotherly screws. Some of these are seriously halfway into their graves. In fact, just as I mentioned before, let's get into a situation you can face. A decrepit, stripped out screw is just not going to come out with a screw gun. But take a deep breath and listen up because I'm only going to say this once. You're going to show that screw who's boss by drilling him out. Pick out a drill bit that has about the same width as one of the holes that the screws runs through. Stick it right in the center of that screw head and make it rain pain. You may not be able to get the screw fully removed, but if you perform a successful screw head decapitation, 
that's all you need to move forward. With our special Scrooby Gone methods used, now we can cut the caulk. Using our utility knife, we slice open the caulk on the side of the roof trim. Now, take your time. Hurry up. The choice is yours, don't be late. Pull out your prying tools, like your putty knife and your paint tool, to start prying that bad boy off. When loose or underneath, we can lightly score the top to get the whole thing off. Haha, <laughs> beautiful. I think I'm gonna throw up. Now I already removed the other side trim piece uh, without recording it, but it's the same as the first one that we did on video. So now we can proceed forward with the most fun part, removing the leftover caulk. We want to get this stuff as completely off as we reasonably can, and this is going to be a long process. You need to take your time with it just like everything else. There will be large chunks of it. So first we're going to use a scraper to remove them. Now the kind of scraper I'm using is a glass scraper, but you could also use maybe a piece of formica to help you remove these large chunks. Once you remove the worst of it, you can use a chemical compound with a rag to remove the rest. Usually, I would use acetone, but I was all out so I used lacquer thinner instead. I saw a recommendation before on another video to use denatured alcohol, and I tried that myself, but it really did not come across as being strong enough to remove the caulk. You could get pretty OCD and remove every piece of residue, but honestly I don't know if you want to spend that much time doing this. I probably spent about three to four hours wiping down the walls where I needed to, and also the trim pieces that I removed. Once the wall corners and trim pieces we are using are nice and clean, we're going to put tape over the gaps we now have on the RV. This tape needs to be covered by the trim, so make sure to get a measurement of how wide your trim pieces are so that when you put the tape on it will be completely covered. This can be tough, because it may not be very much that your tape will be grabbing onto. I've seen recommendations before for corner tight corner seal tape. That does work, absolutely, but the tape I used was roofing tape, which is super sticky stuff. However, it was pretty wide for this application, two inches, uh, but that's all that I could find locally. My trim pieces are one and a half inches wide, and so as I laid the tape on, I also cut it with scissors so that it would fit underneath my trim when I put the trim back on. These wall panels may want to bow out a little bit, and so as you apply the tape, make it stick well to one side. Before you lay the tape down on the other wall panel, make sure to compress the wall panels together with a bit of pushing. Of course, you can use roofing tape to mend any cut parts that were at or under the trim that is on the roof. Now we're really on our way. The end is in sight. And to get to the end, why don't you click the video link for part two of this video. In part two, you'll see how to reapply the trim pieces and make it look pretty. And you'll also see how to avoid certain character building frustrations. And don't forget to do the Big Fab Four. Like this video, leave a comment, share it, and subscribe. You're awesome. See you there.